So I'm back with another Doctor Who Big Finish review, but this time not in the universe you're expecting. This today, for the first time ever on my channel, I'm delving into the Doctor Who Unbound universe with the David Warner Doctor. It's time to take a look at Volume 3 of the Bernie Summerfield New Adventure series with the Unbound Doctor. This is going to be an interesting one. <laughs> Before this review, I never went into the Unbound universe before. I was aware that it existed, but I've never in fact actually gone into it. However, it's been something that I've been quite interested in because it is essentially the What If universe for Doctor Who. I've even believed to an extent they've gone on to do a What If the Doctor was female, What If the Doctor never left Gallifrey, things like that. But today we finally have the return of the Unbound universe with the David Warner Doctor, but this time not in the Unbound universe series, but however with Bernie Summerfield in her new adventures series, this time with Volume 3. Now, once again, I'm aware of who Bernie Summerfield is, and I know that she's actually cropped up with quite a few Doctors in the past and she's in fact also one of the producers for Big Finish as well and generally a really nice person to meet because I've met her myself. This is a very interesting series and for me especially this in fact slipped under my radar and I didn't even realise it was coming out so soon and yeah when I actually seen that it was coming out I got quite excited about it because it is something that I've never gone into before and it is essentially a spin-off that's completely different to what we're used to. So to start off this is on the Big Finish website at the moment for £20 for the pre-order price it will go up in about a month or two to the normal recommended retail 40. Generally I really do recommend this actually for the £20 as it is. If you've never got into the Unbound universe before this is probably a perfect way to do it in. For the majority of box sets this is of course a four part box set with four different stories that have sort of an overarching theme that's quite loose. Generally it's mainly just the layout of the series and the actual location that is the similar thing that links them all together but really other than that they are standalone stories. The first episode of series three is The Library and the Body, written by James Goss, who is a regular for Big Finish. I do believe that I've actually reviewed one of his things very, very recently to introduce me to Bernie Summerfield. Need to, needed to introduce me to David Warner's Doctor, as well as introduce me to the Unbound Universe. And as, and as far as I'm aware, I think they introduced me to all three of them quite well. By the end of the story, I felt like I actually knew what was going on, and I could sort of get into the series from this point very easily. One of my main worries for this box set was, is an Unbound Universe new person going to be able to get into this one? And the answer is yes because I think that I got into it very very quickly and it is overall generally quite a nice box set with some very nice plots. The first episode sets up the series very well. We're introduced to Lisa Bauman's Bernie Summerfield um, for the third time in her new adventure series. By this point no doubt quite a lot of people will of course already know her so we don't really have much of an introduction in there but generally I think that she's quite a nice and warming character. She fits with a lot of Doctors I know and with the Seventh Doctor things like that and I do believe she's even had a book recently with the Twelfth Doctor so it would be somebody that I'd like to actually see in the new series at some point maybe. But generally she's a very interesting character. I do believe that she's an archaeologist and she's got quite a historic sort of attitude which I do quite like and she fits really well with the David Warner Doctor, which is somebody who I didn't have a clue anything about before this point. David Warner Doctor is a Doctor that you won't expect at all. He's not really much of a Doctor. He's a lot different from the Doctor that we're used to in the normal universe of Doctor Who, because this is, of course, a whole other universe. At the first start of the story, in fact, he leaves Bernie's to go and find out what's going on and how to solve it and things. And for the majority of the story, he does, in fact, take a back seat, which is quite a bold thing to do for the first episode of the series. But generally, I kind of feel that it felt that his character sort of fit and did into that quite quite well and throughout the series I did sort of see more of a Doctor aspect in there and he did sort of become more of the Doctor that we actually know in the normals in the universe by the end of the series and I think that's sort of down to Bernice's influence on him to be a bit of William Hartnell because he is generally quite a grumpy doctor but he's one of those grumpy doctors that is in fact quite lovable as well and you do generally like him because there's a fine line between having a grumpy character and having generally a grumpy character that you don't like because then that's generally something that they should have gone down with the 12th doctor route because he did see a bit of that to start with but it sort of faded out to get a bit of this joke doctor. I do wish that they went down a similar route with the Peter Capaldi doctor because I think that his doctor generally fits the Unbound universe quite well also and maybe they should have got a few tips off the David Warner Unbound doctor of how to actually write Capaldi because I think that his sort of format would work very well for Peter's Doctor. The main setting for this series is basically we're in this brand new universe. The Doctor goes into the other universe, the actual universe that technically Doctor Who is in, to basically get Bernie Summerfield because she has this certain Archon energy around her in hope that he can sort of pull her through. But in fact, when he takes Bernice into the TARDIS, he then lands the TARDIS and he ends up when he goes outside back in the normal universe where he's from again and he's not really very happy about it. And generally that universe is pretty much screwed. It's basically recovered 
recovering from a war. I do believe that it's the equivalent of that universe's time war. And yeah, it's a bit more devastational, I think, compared to the time war, really, even though the time war was pretty big. This one seems to be massive because literally the universe in this universe is theoretically dying. The whole of the universe is pretty much blown up. The majority of the planets are gone. And the only thing that's available, because nothing's really of value anymore, but the only thing that is technically of value is knowledge. And that's why a library is very important. At the story, we're introduced to a very nice and confined group of aliens, which are in fact in this library trying to get different things because we have a few robots that want their robot manuals and things of how to repair themselves. We've got a few religious people in there as well that want their version of their different holy books and things like that. And generally, it's a really interesting format. And we're also introduced to an alien called the Kareem, which are basically these people that think that all knowledge is bad because that's what started the war. And therefore, they want to basically destroy the library. And throughout the end of it, they want to destroy it with everybody inside. And it's a really nice threat. I think that works very well in the really interesting plot. At the end of the story, we also have a few little references that in fact reference the ending final part of the series, which is quite interesting. Nothing really too drastic that you don't really know. Nothing really, it's like, oh, I wonder what that means and things like that. It's sort of just a little thing that's added in. So nothing to the equivalent of the Stephen Moffat plots that are too over diluted and horrible and things like that. But this is just a nice little subtle reference which works really well. So overall for episode one, it's in fact a really nice way to get into the series. Next episode of the series is Plan Tex, written by Guy Adams, which in fact my last review was of Fiesta of the Damned, and he was also the writer of that, as well as Torture's really recent major look. So he's actually had quite a lot on Big Finish recently. I'm just going to read the bio for this episode alone, because I think that it sounds absolutely brilliant, to be honest. Bernice and the Doctor land on a planet so dull, no one has even bothered to naming it. Finally, something interesting is about to happen here, which for me basically sums up Middlesbrough as a whole, to be honest. It sounds, it sounds you have this planet that has been diluted down, and it's very much a foreshadow of what we are theoretically where we sort of rely a little bit on technology but everybody is absolutely boring nobody has names in fact they're just numbers and basically they are conditioned people into trying to be smart and they're basically took to these different sections and it's where the law is really really strict and things like that and it's a really nice plot once you actually listen to the behind the scenes for this series, one of the overarching things and the ideas and themes of this series is in fact trying to foreshadow episodes that have actually happened in Doctor Who these days. So, so this episode, as an example, had an overarching theme of really dull types of aliens, and that's a foreshadowing to the Third Doctor era. It's a thing that was a theme in the Third Doctor era. And then in this series, they sort of use that, but why would they be dull? What is sort of conditioned them into being dull? And this sort of gives them a bit of an idea of why and a bit of a background of why they would be like that. And also just for a bit of additional information, the first episode is in fact a bit of a spin in a different universe of the Claws of Axos. We're also introduced to a character played by Sophie Wu in this episode called Millie, or she isn't in fact called Millie, it's just that Bernice calls her Millie because she just has a really long numbered name. And yet she's quite an interesting character for the story once again. She seems quite young, which is quite nice, quite an innocent character who's sort of caught up in this really bad and horrible universe. And once again we have the same theme that the universe is basically dying. This sort of planet is a bit sort of pushed out to the side where nothing really is in fact going on, and it is generally a really dull planet. And and he's actually quite a nice aspect of the story because once again she becomes the companion of Benny in a way and then from then on we can sort of see the impact that this has in the character of the story and I think that's a really good way to in fact have somebody and sort of introduce the context as well. One of the most surprising things for this story is Benny and the Doctor actually spend quite a long time apart. The Doctor goes off to this main factory place where he's took off because he's too interesting and Benny basically spends the majority of the episode on the run being very angry which is something that you're not allowed to be in this dull universe if you're just mildly showing emotion. You basically die so that's something that definitely Benny's not very used to because she's a very emotional, very mad, very funny, very bubbly character. The episode also sees quite a few comedic moments as well, and with the Doctor especially. I think that there is a lot of them. Um, Bernie sort of references it as banter, so I don't really like to use that term, but it is essentially banter with this Doctor. He's um, quite a dark one, as I say. He's quite sort of uncomfortable in parts. He's a little bit like William Hartnell, where some people say he's a little bit unlikable. Personally, William Hartnell's Doctor sort of has a thing. I think that I really like him for some reason. I think that because I like Hartnell there is a bit of Hartnell in this Doctor even though that I do believe the Unbound Doctor is meant to be a different universe's version of the third Doctor. He has some really good moments so especially when um, they're trying to take this information from his mind and extract his information and his opinions and things like that and of course because he's a time lord it doesn't work. I do believe that in this universe he also goes by the title of the saviour of the universe or something quite egotistical like that which is something that he doesn't really like because um, he's, quite a, he's quite a reserved person that doesn't really care too much which is something that is the like, exact opposite to the actual Doctor that we know. I think that those sort of comparisons in there sort of make him quite likeable and generally I really like his Doctor. 
Once again, it's one of those episodes where Guy Adams is quite interesting. I do believe that when Guy Adams does, does a story, he does it right. He does it very different. It's something that we've not really seen very much in Doctor Who before. And I think that if it was done in the new series, it would be a worry. And it would probably be a script that would be disregarded because it would be too much of a risk. Because if you've got a dull place, what if the episode feels quite dull? Even though the majority of the new series episodes are quite dull anyway, especially under Mothbat's run. Um, but yeah, I think that this episode is once again doing something new, but doing it right as well. Now moving on to the third episode of the series written by Una McCormack. She's done a few of the novels in the past, I do believe, for the 11th Doctor. She definitely brings a bell in my mind. However, for Big Finish, she's one of those writers that I don't really know of. She's, of course, a female writer for Bernie Summerfield. I do believe she may have done some in the past, actually. I don't know, but don't quote me on that. But yeah, A Very Dark Thing is one of those ones that if I read the bio for you, will probably go, what the hell is this? It includes unicorns. I'm going to get the elephant out in the room first, even though it's not an elephant, it's a unicorn. But yeah. This episode features unicorns, but let's face it, it's in another universe, so if we're allowed unicorns, we're allowed unicorns, but these are grumpy unicorns. So, you know, if you're going to have any type of unicorn, it's a grumpy unicorn. Why am I saying unicorn? This sounds really weird. We've got Doctor Who and unicorns. What else would you not want in life? And this one is once again a very interesting plot. We're in a, another planet, this time once again, where basically the universe is dying once again. But they're using this weapon, and we get introduced at the very start of the story before we even see the Doctor and Benny, and they're going to use this weapon. And then um, they actually activate it at the very start of the story, and that's all we hear. And then the next thing that we see is the Doctor trying to work out why this river is singing and is a bit distracted, and Benny isn't. She's very concerned because this planet's being bombed. We're introduced to this character called Magatz, which is the equivalent of Millie for this story once again. And the world is being blown up, and everybody else is delirious. And we basically have and them being very nice and all happy and things, and um, sort of trying to work out what the river's saying, because the river's singing, and the Doctor gets hypnotised as well. However, in this episode, the Doctor does in fact find out that there's something going on in his mind he's getting distracted by really weird things and for some reason Benny's the only one that can in fact see this and this is because she's not from that universe she's from in fact the other universe our universe or the doctor's universe that we're used to and um yeah we basically get to see how it doesn't affect her and she's very concerned about this whole world being blown up and everybody else being absolutely delirious to it do I get to speak about the unicorns now yes of course I do the unicorns and um, the unicorns to be honest I've made a bit of a fuss about them so far they don't really have much of an effect in the story as much really they're just sort of a creature that is a part of the world as well as the humanoid people and um yeah they're interesting and um, they basically kill people and um, so they're a bit angry and um, you can sort of tell you've got a horse with a horn on its head how's it gonna kill somebody with the horn but yeah it basically gores people i do believe that's what it's called i don't know gores gnorns i don't know i'm not used to unicorns in doctor who but yeah basically sticks their spike right through them i can remember when it actually got mentioned in the story now so hmm, i wonder what's that however i do have an idea so i had to put it into google images and really regretted it because the first thing that i seen was a dead corpse of somebody with a unicorn shoved through them so yeah unicorns kill people apparently but yeah generally they're not cheesy and um, is what i like i think that um, unicorns are sometimes in fact depicted as not really fairy tale creatures in recent years there have been they've been sort of pictured to be really happy things but in this episode they're taking on more of the grim fairy tales format of being quite serious and evil creatures about this story there's basically this alien race which are going to be um, basically the equivalent of a nuclear weapon on this planet and killing absolutely everybody and they send several warnings but of course this weapon that they've used previous basically makes them delirious of that and they don't in fact know and they can't in fact hear that they're basically going to get blown up every minute so they bring down the people but other troops get distracted and then the captain of this group gets confused because why are they getting distracted by a river and things like that and it's generally a really nice plot because we have a basically an episode of misunderstanding by the end of it Magats in fact sees her parents because they're the ones that are the ones that did it and by the end of the story Magats uses that and uses the emotion to sort of overcome this and sort of put the announcement above and the planet and let everybody hear what's going to happen and then of course they can stop it in time and once again there's quite a few moments in this story and where the Doctor really does come out in this episode. There's also a moment in Planet X which I've forgotten to talk about by the end of the story where and the Doctor wants to make sure that nobody is dull anymore. He wants people to go and have a life, basically. And um, he um, patches in his information in his head into the sort of the overcome thing and um, we basically have tons and tons of flashbacks. It reminds me a bit of the Alamp Fowler and the Atraxi when they're on the roof but in this episode we have the Unbound Doctor doing it where um, we basically have a few flashbacks to his previous adventures in the actual Unbound series where we 
have him sort of being with the Daleks. You have a few cameos of them in this little scene. It's nothing too drastic, but I can imagine it being something really nice and nostalgic for people that do, in fact, really like the um, uh, the Unbound universe. And, um, yeah, it was a really nice scene. And at this moment, I really felt, do you know what? This guy's the Doctor. The final episode of the series is the Emporium at the end, which sums up the series very well. As, as I've said throughout this, um, we're basically in the universe where everything is dying down. And that centres around this episode. Once again, we're on a bit of an asteroid slash planet place at the very end of the universe. Basically, have this person in this emporium in this shopping department essentially doing this lottery and if you win using numbers and different symbols you in fact can get to this other universe via this portal and um, it's all a bit weird isn't it? It sounds a bit weird already. We have a few recurring characters in this story as well. We have um, the return of the um, people from St. Beadelix, the nuns, which um, were previously seen in the first story with the library which is really nice. They don't really have a massive role in the story however they have some really great moments and there's a great moment where the um, main nun in fact gets drawn drunk with Benny because she is quite an alcoholic character and it is a brilliant scene. I do love this story and Benny has some brilliant moments throughout the whole series and generally I really like the recurring characters. I introduced this story to two robots. We have Amps and Thors which are basically a dad and daughter robot which um, we don't really get to know how they're dad and daughter. Um, he does in fact say that he can draw off the circuit map to show how which is quite a funny scene but yeah and they're really nice actually. I think that once again I love the way that Big Finish have in fact used robots in this episode very well. They do in fact use emotion and very nicely and there's this excellent scene where in fact you can trade which is once again a recurring theme of the series memory and knowledge and things like that and basically when you don't have any credits or money left you can then start to trade your mind and it's in fact a very dark part of the story when we find out that the doctor has in fact traded in large chunks of his past in his mind that he can't in fact remember to in fact save this universe and make it survive for an extra few thousand years and um, it's a very dark moment when we actually find out that because he doesn't in fact know who his people is he doesn't know that he is a time lord and um, which I think it's just an excellent scene. I think that it's absolutely brilliant and he's a very a confused Doctor because it is essentially the Doctor that we know now but not knowing his first to fifth or sixth incarnation which I think is a very quite eerie idea actually. And then Thor's the father robot in the story in fact trades some of his memories that he has in his robot brain to in fact help to get tickets to save his daughter to go into this other universe and um, it's a very sad scene actually and in fact lo does lose his mind I think in the episode in fact um, he questions if he has a daughter or not and he doesn't have one and it's very yet yeah, rare for his robot type to in fact have um, uh, daughters and things like that and by the end of the story he gets some of his memory back which is great to see and there's this really sad scene where he's in fact in the lower region of the apartment start looking for something or someone that he doesn't quite know. It's of course his daughter that we have this really nice reuniting thing at the very end of the episode which is really nice in general. I think that they're really nice characters. I think that once again Big Finish are daring to do robots of emotion and this time they're not comedic robots. They have some great lines don't get me wrong but they're took seriously. I took them seriously and they are essentially two robot people and I really do like them in the story. Now there's a big part of the series which is slap bang on the cover which I've not gotten into yet. Sam Kisgar plays the master. Who's Sam Kiskar, do you ask? Well, it's of course Mark Gatiss. Um, he basically plays the Unbound Master, and I don't, I don't even know what incarnation of Master he would be. He does have a beard, I do believe, that's referenced in the story. And um, yeah, I think that the Master is once again one of those people that he does play quite well. He's generally, he's a bit of a Moriarty. I think that if he was a Moriarty figure in Sherlock, of course he's not his Minecraft, but yeah, he does. He's generally quite an evil style of character, and um, I think that when he's playing an evil person, he does tend to play them often quite all the same, really. And um, he's a very good Master, I think. Key. So I wouldn't really want to assume the series by any means. I think that once you have an Unbound Master in a What If universe, I think that that's the time to risk something and do Mark Gatiss as the Master. And generally he's really interesting. I think that he is quite a young Master compared to David Warner's Doctor. That does tend to happen quite well. Of course he knows the Doctor, but the Doctor doesn't know him because he's traded his mind. And um, yeah, it's a very intriguing thing. He also has a bit of a relationship with Benny as well. Later in the story, Emma Reeves in fact says that she does in fact believe when she was writing this story that there was in fact a bit of an interest in the master's mind with Benny and there was a little bit of truth behind it and he wasn't just using her which I don't mind I think that it worked very well at the end of the episode the only way to save everybody in the universe is if Benny goes back through the portal because she's in fact from the universe that everybody's trying to get to of course this is just a fake thing and um, because she's sort of a alliance person with the doctor and uh, the portal that they're going to use is in fact fake it's basically just something that they were going to and be disintegrated and so many thousands of people have gone into 
into this machine and been disintegrated and they've never got into the other universe and he uses this energy himself. So something like he's using the energy of uh, them disintegrating people to in fact get to the universe himself. I'm presuming in his TARDIS, I don't really know though. Because time's going a little bit weird and there's sort of a bit of a market of all the things left over in the universe and of course M. Bernice has also met the seventh doctor and things like that and other doctors I do believe. I can't remember exactly what one she's in fact met and what one she hasn't. Um, but yeah, I, I'm guessing she's met quite a few and uh, I, I believe she has in Big Finish Audio Adventures and um, yeah, there's this excellent scene where she in fact sees a sonic screwdriver and she then gives the sonic screwdriver to the Unbound Doctor because he doesn't have a sonic screwdriver and earlier on in the story he does in fact mention of how he wished he created something of him that could open doors and things like that and of course by the end of the story Bernice gives him it and says like this is a sonic screwdriver and you're now going to use it and that is a part of the plot in the end that helps save the day and things like that and generally overall it's a very nice episode I do believe that the master in fact and when he is eventually defeated because of course he is or at least of course he might have not been because this is the unbound universe and for all we know the doctor could have just died anything can happen because we don't have a whole more series to go we don't know when the unbound universe could end the doctor could just die or something but yeah the master is defeated of course he's in fact thrown off a roof i do believe by a ton of nuns and they're singing their song of numbers which um very nice and not really very dignified way to go which is a perfect way for the master to go to be honest and by the end of the story uh, bernice and the doctor go off in the tardis i do believe that and the doctor says i'll get you back um to your normal universe because that's what he promises that um, benny throughout the whole of the series and she sort of makes a reference that she um, will go home eventually because of the fun that they've actually had making the series i do believe that initially it was going to be just the one thing and by the end of it she would have gone back to her own universe very easily and probably just restored as to normal and then she would have had another series with another doctor in the normal universe but i do believe that the actual production team have had a lot of fun behind this and what it actually seems from the behind the scenes stuff is they had that much fun making it from the cast enjoying actually acting in it and the writers in fact writing it and the producers actually making it that they've decided to carry this on for the next volume of burning summerfield whenever that may be i don't in fact know and um, which i'm quite excited to see because i don't believe we've ever really seen the unbound doctor out of the unbound universe really it's quite a restricted area so it's nice to in fact see more of the unbound doctor and for somebody who's never even heard of him before this point it's I'm shocked because I actually really enjoyed this series and I honestly think that it's probably one of my favourite listens of this year. Probably. If not in my top five, top three maybe. I don't know. It's quite a good box set. And before I just like to wrap up by saying the theme tune is absolutely amazing. I absolutely loved it. I do love a good theme tune from now and again. I love the War Doctor one and the stuff that they've done with Torchwood is absolutely brilliant. But the composition for the theme tune for this series is on it's amazing it's and um, there is a bit of a behind the scenes thing once again of how they in fact made it and the things that inspired them but generally the soundtrack for this series is excellent i've watched it because it is in fact a part of the um, download at the very end you do in fact get a, a sort of suite of all the music that was in the series or whatever it's called a suit even and um, yeah, it is an excellent soundtrack and once again probably one of the best soundtracks that have in fact been this year i really enjoyed it it was great to accompany benny i think there's some great music in there as well as well as the unbound doctor himself and it was generally a really atmospheric piece and i really enjoyed it throughout the whole of the series so that's it i'm done now i'm gonna stop sort of raving about it generally as you can probably assume i've in fact really enjoyed this series i think that it is a series that i didn't expect to even be reviewing but when i sort of seen the description for this box set and seen the information that they had to offer generally i really enjoyed it i think that as this is unbound stuff it is generally in a different universe it is a little bit of a risk for a new series listener or a person who's new to big finish so if you've been used to big finish now for at least a year something like that i would recommend this i think that it's sort of about time to go into the advent adventurous area of Big Finish and this is definitely an adventurous box set I think that as it is in a whole new universe it's something new and as well if you like the Unbound stuff this is a must for you because it of course is more of the Unbound Doctor and David Warner is just brilliant I really did love his Doctor and I think that this should definitely go down that route hopefully with Peter Capaldi in the Chibnall era fingers crossed hopefully but yeah other than that generally I highly recommend this box set it's definitely worth the price of £20 and I would dare say if you want to stretch the price and you've seen this review after the two months of release I'd recommend and this release is all probably the full recommended retail because it is a good one but yeah go to the big finish website as i say link in the description below and i highly recommend this release so thanks for watching this review if you enjoyed it please do give it a big like please subscribe if you're not already if any questions please do leave them below and i'll be sure to answer them at some point in the near future thanks again for watching i shall see you all next time so thanks for watching and bye for now